Glory to Jesus.
Hello, welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by MagnaCraft Consulting Team, anchored by Nii Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Nii Dumade. Good morning. I'm so excited to be with you this Monday morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today is another day of Monday Morning Matters. Monday Morning Matters comes every Monday with some good information so that you can set your course for the week and get your church in the right direction we have not moved away from the health church health framework which is this you know we have the spiritual side the top side of the fishbone diagram and we have the um, the emotional side or the soul side of the church which is the bottom side of the diagram and today we're going to talk more on the physical side that has to do with the vital signs of the church remember that a church has the, the, the different positions on the life cycle and we need to know where we are as a church and because the, the vital signs are very key the church the church health matters are very important and we need to know where we are because if you have an high blood pressure at age 18 it's different from when you have high blood pressure at age 65 so life cycle is always very important for us as consultants to be able to see how that church can navigate towards health one of our one of the of, of the goals of our company magnicraft consulting is to position churches to be healthy because we believe that when a church is healthy a lot of things can happen god can use that church for his glory i don't think there's anybody who wants to use something that is unhealthy or something that is defective god wants to use churches that he knows that are going to be sharp threshing instrument in his hands we want to use churches that are healthy that will, will, will do justice to the mandate he has given uh, the church having a lot of people in your church does not is not the same thing as having a lot of disciples you can have crowds in fact it's very easy to just make crowds i can tell you raise the dead in your church you will see crowd the following day okay or feed thousands the way like jesus did okay bread and fish you're going to get crowds so to get crowds in your church it's very easy if you can compromise or do what uh, i call using and uh, utilizing the gift but you see having a lot of people is never the same as having a lot of disciples and the more disciples we have in our churches the more disciples we have in our churches the better and the healthier our church will be so um today we're going to just do something very briefly and then i will go on to some of these data points that helps us towards health as a church okay so who are you currently sharing the gospel with the gospel conversations you are having are you having them at all are you having them with the church the unsaved the pe people who are in the community who are you currently discipling and last uh, monday i made mention that a church needs to know the costs of actually getting someone saved and then the cost of actually discipling someone so that we we we've count the cost and we are willing to pay the price to make sure that these people are not going to hell all right so it is harder i understand the challenges of covid19 covid19 has actually come to shake um the foundations of our churches the truth about is that if your church is unhealthy before covid covid will just expose those unhealthy states if your church is not well structured or well organized covid is going to make it more much much more disorganized so covid is just like an exposer it's an accelerator and it's also a, a, a disruptor. Those three things are very good, very key for us at this moment. It is a, an accelerator, it's a disruptor, and it's an exposure. It, it gives us those churches that are healthy. When the COVID just came, it actually exposes um, the health, true state of their church 
to the to, to the congregation so um what we are trying to say the platter process is that we get data when you get the data you uh, analyze it analytics from analytics it provides you with a lot of insight after getting some insight it, you, it, you, you have to be forced to make decisions if you are aware of something in your church by the fact of of a data or information you have to decide about it in fact sometimes one of the things that actually frustrated me as uh, as a pastor is we, we we see the vital signs but we do not want to take action you see we don't want to take decisions because the decisions is what will lead to action and the action is what will bring about the result you knowing something does not make you have the results you knowing something does not make you a superpower. It's what you do with what you know that actually brings about the result. All right. So um, last Monday, we also said about the four stages of analytics. Four stages of analytics. One has to do with the descriptive analytics. That tells us what happened. And of course, if you are a church that is trying to be reactive, you are going to just solely rest on this stage, the first stage alone. What happened? Okay, we are all just catching the, 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 the moment of what happened. All right, but the truth of us is that we need to go deeper. And that has to do with diagnostics. As a consultant, we do a lot of diagnostics. We do a lot of assessment. And we, one of the frequent questions we ask is a lot of whys. What are the reasons? What are the causes? What are the in, 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 uh, motives? What are the intentions? Okay, why did it happen? Why did it happen? That's diagnostic analysis. The third stage is the predictive. Okay, what might happen? Okay, if you put in salt in the soup, what will happen if you put in this factor in this whole mix? What will happen? So that is the predictive analytics. Then we go into the prescriptive analytic analytics, which is what should we do? And I love that it brings us to a point of a best course of action with all this data information. How do we navigate our church from here? Okay, and then these are the, the four stages of the analytics where it comes from the past strength. Because if you look at your past strength, it will tell you how to avert. The result the past strength has provided you know the causes you can actually come to a predictive position to sell, tell yourself you are actually on course to your future uh, your preferred future and the best course of action to where you are going okay so what am i saying you see in the in the in in, in the covid era there, there's a lot of benefits of data analytics there's a lot of clarity there's a lot of improvement there's a lot of uh, next step planning because if you are, a lot of churches are, are, are going to do a lot of planning for 2021 you need a lot of information to be able to do correct next step planning proper strategic planning then you can also t get yourself some indicators to monitor your progress monitoring and evaluation is very key if you at all you want to um, get your boat in the right sail towards the right direction to get to the right destination. You see, when I was in the military school, we do something we call um, compass match. Okay, they, they, uh, they give us a map a map and a compass, and then we begin to plot the map on, 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 on the ground, take, take a landmark and walk towards it. You see, one thing about the compass is that if you are just merely degree away from your target, the more you approach that target, the more you are away from it. So you have to be precise in the decision making. You have to take um, um, advantage of machine learning, artificial intelligence, a lot of all these tools to be able to juggle your data and get the needed information you need to make that right decision. What did Jesus give as a mandate for the church? He says we well, should go be fruitful and multiply multiplication always beats addition god desires that his church should multiply god desires that his church should be fruitful and that's why anything that is in line with fruitfulness and multiplication any data in that line is very 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 important we can each probably come up with a list of discipleship focus metrics and i'm going to mention about 10 of them and then we'll go into the 14 vital signs that we'll be talking about in the course of the week okay in the course of the week there are a lot of discipleship um, focus metrics and we can 
always get that um, 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 information from from next week monday but you see i want to i did a survey of almost 600 pastors and i just want to share the data slides with you here okay data slides with you here all right these are the stats can you see that, that I, we may mention about um the churches who are into branching a multi-site multi-site about 20 percent are not into branching or multi-site about 20 percent only have one branch which is what what they have then between two to five we have about 31 percent into branching or multi-site okay so we still have a lot of churches who have not even gone branching or multi-site in nature all right so the next one has to do with um attendance size you can see that we have over 61 percent of churches who are less than 150 some of that 70, 100, 60, less than 150. So there's a, an issue of growth. There's a lot of decline, and then we need to do something about it. Okay. Then we have um, the, now. This is where I want. I wanted to go. Um, the church L side ranking. Okay. The top side of the fishbone diagram, which is worship, ministry, prayers, um, evangelism, discipleship, fellowship. You can see that evangelism and discipleship are not. In most churches are not doing so well in evangelism and discipleship. Most churches are doing well in worship and, uh, of course, in ministry, but in and, and prayer. But in evangelism and discipleship, there's there's no good. There's an unhealthy um, state. I can see an extreme unhealthiness and an unhealthiness in those in those uh, area. And then we go into the top the bottom side of the fishbone diagram which is the oxygenal health side of the fishbone diagram and then we can see that there's a lot of unhealthiness in terms of assimilation in terms of resources assimilation is something as onboarding okay and then you can see that there's a lot of um, work to be done in those um, areas now the reason why i'm saying brought all this is that because we need a lot of data put our eyes more on discipleship discipleship focus metrics one the number of mature disciples being matured how many of them are in your church two the number of relationship with not yet believers okay uh, you know most of most churches always tend towards inward inward focusedness but we need to make sure that there's a number a good healthy number of relationships that we have on a periodic basis with unbelievers not yet believers three the number of gospel displays in and through the culture of the church. How many gospel presentations do you have on a daily basis? Online, offline, anywhere. What are the gospel displays you have to the community on a regular basis? Four, the number of gospel conversations taking place naturally. You are not just trying to ask people to go preach the gospel or evangelize. The number of gospel conversations taking place naturally. Then five, the number of indigenous leaders being developed okay being developed who are the indigenous leaders being developed are this six are discipleship commitment communities multiplying small groups are they breaking are they multiplying are, are we creating multiplying disciples because the truth about it that the business of the church is to what make disciples is to make disciples number eight Number seven is an increasing number of lay people taking ownership of all levels of ministry. Okay, you don't solely rely on staff to do a lot of all this ministry around evangelism and discipleship. Eight are both paid and lay church leaders maturing in all the efficiency of the four leadership roles. Okay, nine are you seeing the priesthood of all believers working out in every area of ministry and mission 10 number of people sent to start new work i see that's why i gave you a statistic about branching a lot of churches are not thinking of church planting they're not thinking of branching they're not thinking of multi-site these days question is this what if we have new tools to measure health and succeed in church or in a missional community what if we watch over and prioritize the same things jesus did the same things that Jesus emphasized, would this give us a new sign of spiritual healthy church? Spiritually healthy church. Okay, so we're going to go straight down into, I'm going to wrap up in another two minutes. 
and then we will now next monday we're going to go deep into some of these things in in details now what are the vital signs that, that now this is me getting you the vital signs of my own stage one uh, church consultations for churches okay now the, the first one which is okay i'm just going to draw through it and then we'll not start taking them uh, in couples from next month monday 14 church vital signs number one is attendance change i'm not crazy about your attendance but i want to see your attendance change over the period of 10 years how has your attendance changed over time is it declining is it increasing how is it increasing from year to year guest to attendance that's another one we also look at Guest to attend that because there's a there's a there's a benchmark that that figure needs to be if your church needs to be growing and healthy. Then conversion rate and baptisms, young families, the next generation. How do you connect with the generation Y, X, and Z, the next generation or the millennials, generation Z? Small group community, volunteers, and membership ratio of your attendance. Attendance to staff. Are you overstaffed? Are you understaffed? Are you not? Are you maximizing your volunteers? Then the per capital giving, weeks in cash reserve, debt to annual giving, percentage. If I debt to annual giving is it, something that is not so rampant in Nigeria, but a lot of churches have that statistics on the table. Weeks in cash reserve. If a lot of churches have weeks in cash reserve, there will not be a lot of panic in uh, churches. But we're going to go deeply. How does this data point? us towards health okay percentage of staff budget attendance to seat and sitting and parking or all the facility and utility analysis of our church okay so those are the 14 vital signs we're going to look into in a, in a, from next week monday i want to wrap it up here please feel free to share this video share this broadcast to someone like my page on facebook and subscribe to my youtube channel um quite a lot of information have been shared uh, it takes a lot of work to come your way on a regular basis every Monday to share good content. Today, I've just told you the 14 vital signs. And from next Monday, we'll be taking them in couples uh, for the subsequent Monday morning matters. Okay, so feel free to always also chat with me. Thank you for all the pastors who are doing so sharing this content because you as a senior pastor knowing this thing is not enough you need to also allow the, your lieutenants your co-laborers in the vineyard to also be aware of some of this information in available to you so that you can also work together as a team to navigate that church towards health okay today is money money matters and please feel free to also share this money matters to someone please like my facebook page and then um go on that's my contact and then if you have any question please feel free to um hook me up in any of any of the ch chatting uh platforms you you'll be glad to um chat with me i'm telling you i'll give you some good information that you'll be you'll be happy to hook up with me thank you for allowing me to come to your space and then please feel free to also share this video my name is Nid Dumade i'm the ceo and the founder of magnicraft consulting limited till i come away next week monday i love you have a blessed week have a wonderful week thank you god bless you